I am the box ghost! I'm the box ghost! Hello, welcome to He's a Phantom Podcast, episode 2, where we talk about Danny Phantom all the time. This time we're going to talk about episode 2, also known as episode 3 for some odd reason. Goddamn Nickel and stop airing our episodes out of order. Uh, this episode's called One of a Kind, and let me introduce my co-host to you guys. We've got Wade Phillips, Devin Cook. Hey, hey, here's my chicken. I brought chicken on this podcast. I'm gonna be the in this episode, so. That makes sense. And Zane. That's my name. <laughs> I am the Z. <laughs> I, I, I have an idea for a running gag. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> when you introduce me, Mike, um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to say, say my name. And you all say, you're Zane, and I'll say, oh, no. God damn it. Mm. Uh, you know what? I'm not gonna comment on that. No, I'm not. Let's um. So what? Are, what? <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> what? It's an adventure. If you understand it, what are our first? What? What are our? What are our first impressions of this episode? Samson, or... So, basically... There's only two in existence, they're both males. Um, yeah, we get introduced to a main ghost villain, also known as... Stalker? Skulker. Skulker. I watched the episode last night, so I'm very hazy on it. I was gonna say, it sounded like Stalker for a minute. I was like, whoa! <laughs> he is! He kind of stalks and captures rare ghosts. Oh, oh my god. That's a good point. That villain is awesome. Oh, guys, I. Oh my god. I'm a huge sucker for villains. I. Mm-hmm. Oh. And Skulker is awesome. I, I, I love his design. Love that. Yeah. I, I, like, I like actually hearing him talk, because I, I don't remember what his voice actor name was. Well, here's the thing. This is his first appearance, and this is not the last time we're going to see him. We're going to see him in later episodes in the show, and he's voiced by a different actor later on. Yeah. So, so when you hear him this time, it's it's the second guy who voiced him because his voice sounded very similar to the guy. I don't know the guy's name, but it's that same voice who voiced um, what's the guy's name? Gantu from Lilo and Stitch. Oh, I know. Yeah. You know, shark face. Yeah, I think it's. I think I. Yeah, like I said, it's Kevin Michael Richardson or something. Okay. Yeah, he's. I know the he, voices, he, but I don't. Yeah, he's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he he'll voice the character later on in the show because he'll come back. So it's not the last time we'll see him, even though the reveal of who he really is is shocking. Just a teeny bitty ghost. Yeah. Just up as a big ghost, and all that armor. It's like the opposite of the Terminator, basically. His exoskeleton's on the outside instead of the inside. Exactly. 
I just found that really hilarious how he was a teeny little goat. <laughs> I just. That is true. It's like he's so small and he's like. I'm that was hilarious. <laughs> it was just hilarious when I saw it. I was like, whoa, what? It's not menacing. Like, You're gonna wait. You were never born. <laughs> I'll get you! I'll get you! Oh my god. That is just a miracle. And we gotta talk about the, the one other villain in this episode. The box ghost. Box ghost! The box ghost! I seriously love this character. He's probably one of my favorite villains introduced early. He's so funny! It's just, I it's am the box ghost! Design is kind of funny too, because he's basically a bum. The box oh, ghost. Oh, I that's, agree. Actually, that's true. He's kind of a bum design, or like a, I'm sorry, like a, um, like a guy working in the swamp. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy working at the docks, basically. Yeah, that's what I'm. Thinking. Yeah, basically. Oh, that was kind of clever. Oh yeah. He loves boxes and. Yes, boxes he does. <laughs> All sorts of boxes. Cardboard uh -huh. boxes, crates, you name it. Don't, don't you be talking about my boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want your boxes. I want my own. So we talked about the ghost, but uh, there's much more uh, human development with uh, the Fenton family, especially with the Jazz trying to get her mother into Genie's Magazine, which that was an interesting subplot on the side. Exactly. Then I'd, be able to, they, then I'd be able to give him a hard time on it, right? It was hysterical, and I just thought that was so funny, because I reported him, and he was just like, he's a genius. I'm like, dude, have you seen his report card? <laughs> but the thing, the thing I've noticed that he does end up on the magazine at the end. Yeah. Ridiculous lines. I love ridiculous lines like that. And it's good humor too. It's it, it's it, they're all it, it all ties together. It's all relevant. Mhm. Mm See, Danny tries to time out, schedule out between being a superhero and being a no normal kid with school. So Tucker has this PDA system as a schedule attempt, tries to help him out with everything. And that ends up being uh, used by Skulker when he puts it onto his console, and <laughs> the schedule's still on it, and every time it, something happens on the schedule, he has to fly out. <laughs> just pull it. That is hilarious, just because, think about it, it's technology, he has no idea how to use it, and he's like, uh, oh, gotta go get an article about purpleback gorillas. <laughs> no, I'm not finished with you yet! <laughs> I cannot see Skulker having that as part of his normal routine. Nope. He's just a rogue. <laughs> yep. Plus, Tucker's uh, ring. Let's talk about Tucker's ringtone. The William Tell Overture. Each yep. time it rings. Yep. <laughs> Most awesome ringtone ever. Yep. <laughs> you gotta find that. Find and use it as your own ringtone. Tucker like classical music. I didn't even know that was classical music. Good job. I didn't know that. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> just the regular like Nokia's ringtone or something. Yep. <laughs> and then um, 
there's the other subplot where he's trying to raise his grade and Sam's like, you could take extra credit and do some research on the purple bat gorillas and they go to the zoo and see Samson. And Samson is a gorgeous gorilla. Holy crap. A white gorilla with purple back. Oh, gorgeous. Just scratch his butt. Do something! What? What was that? There's trouble? I'll, I'll let you loose! <laughs> Sam lets the gorilla out. Why would... <laughs> she lets loose a 400 pound gorilla? Because she had no idea that Skulker was there, and why the purple back gorilla wanted out was just to go attack Skulker, which technically was a good thing, but that doesn't make her smart. Well, it's yeah. interesting too because they say in a lot of uh, paranormal cases, animals can sense the presence of spirits before people can a lot of times. Right. Actually, that I've heard, especially cats. Cat. I, oh, well, yeah. I've heard that. Well, cats are awesome. They're, they're basically fluffy and cuddly predators who could rip apart tiny little animals mm -hmm. and get some food. <laughs> I, have, I know, I have three, but still. Aww. It's adorable. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, what was the one part? I, yeah, I love how, um, so who remembers the hugging? The hugging scene. <laughs> the hugging scene. You know when Tucker and Danny fall, 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 fall. Oh yes. They're cuddling. Of, uh, They're cuddling. Yeah, for the blackmail. Yep, yeah, blackmail. <laughs> yeah, the the sleeping scene. They fell asleep while re while watching the gorilla. But oh. here. I want to bring this up because she takes the pictures in the Polaroid camera, and this is like in 2004. So they had Polaroid cameras in 2004. Wouldn't she have like a? I, they still did. They have I didn't know what they I'm did because. Sure I'm sure they were probably on the start of going out of date by that. Time. Probably. I was, I was, I was looking. I was like, that's a. That was like Polaroids. Like what the fuck? They're, they're gone now. Digital that I rarely use actually. I only use my uh, iPhone pretty much now. I don't like take pictures. Everybody this does. Was long before the iPhone was even thought of. So. No, this yeah, this was long before that. Because Tucker had like a, a PDA, not like a phone. So that's the technology back then. I guess that was like the predecessor to the uh, BlackBerry. Probably, yeah. Which is interesting to see, interesting to look back on a show that has like dated technology compared to right, now. But, but it doesn't really feel that dated, actually. Mm, yeah, you're right. You're right, because in some ways, like, because you think about it, it's like, oh, there's a PDA, oh, that's technology, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's true, but I think most people won't notice that except for us. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Because we, we're the kind of people who focus in on all the little details nobody else cares about. Exactly. <laughs> Any, uh... God, where are we going to go? Any, like... Any, like, animation or voice acting you want to highlight? Like, any moments you want to highlight from the episode that you like really liked? Like... Like the, you mean like the slow choreographed scene? Yeah. And it almost has that feel of like a comic book illustration at times. Like it's like, mm. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. 
Well, I was just thinking of another scene. I like I'll do like the um when at the very end when Danny sees like the box ghost and so Danny Tucker share a proverb behind it. It's like you got five minutes. It's like five. That's more than I need. <laughs> Back on schedule. I think one moment that I can pick on that I picked up on is Danny's pissed off moment when Skulker's about to throw him into the ghost portal. Mm-hmm. The Fenton, uh, the Fenton, um, the Fenton, por- the Fenton portal. Yep. Yeah, and he at just one point just goes, no! like he really yells out a no. Okay, I think I noticed that the eyes. Do you pay attention to the eyes? Oh yeah. Like, like sometimes they'll get really dark. They really bright green. Yeah. There was an animation in this one. It was there? It's, yeah, it turned blue. It was a light blue, just like it's like a... Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. It was in that scene, I think. It was in that scene where he was all pissed off. It was bright blue. He was... I think oh, yeah. I think he was terrified as well because, well, this was prior to... At this point, he's never been inside the Nope, nope, not yet. Not yet. Think about it. If, you, if, if somebody was going to throw you into this universe which you had no idea what it's like, what's lurking in there, and what, what, what's going to happen to me, I'm sure you'd be pretty terrified too. Because, yeah. what you, what, because here again, what, what, bottom line, what, what do people really fear the most when it comes down to it? The unknown. Yeah. Yeah. All this is going on when, while while uh, they're doing the interview upstairs with Jack, um, Jazz, <laughs> and Matt. Huh? Jack doesn't really talk about it. Or he tries. He, he tries to. He tries. He brings up ghosts. Uh, much to the dismay of Jax. He's trying to keep them. You know, we're not going to talk about ghosts. We're just a normal family. Well, there's the. There's the invention of the week where it was um, the ghost talker or what? What did he call it? The ghost jabber, where he trans, yeah, yeah he translate what ghosts are saying into human speak. Mm, yes, it was like it was like a, a form of uh, EB, EBP, which stands for electronic voice phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Just funny, is he said boo, and it's just like, I am a ghost. Fear me. And then afterwards, oh, every time... The most simplest thing a ghost can say is just boo. And he goes, go boo, right? Exactly. That was funny. Fear me. Fear me. Every time, every time Danny could talk, it's like, the sentence was saying, it said, fear me. Fear me. I love that. It's just so random. It's like, fear me. And every time a, a crowd of ghosts hears another ghost go, boo, the whole bunch of them go, boo. Not that much one of a kind, is it? I guess not. <laughs> Yay, episode new <laughs> They said the episode title! He's just learning about his abilities and, and it's still at this point, and it's all really still just new to him. Yeah, so it's oh, it's only just the beginning still. Yeah. And Tucker's not a very good sidekick for so much. No. No. <laughs> he gets sidetracked pretty easily. <laughs> and sometimes. Sometimes he likes to crack jokes when it's not always convenient to the situation. <laughs> it's like, Tucker, this is serious here. Yeah, this is serious, Tucker. I know! <laughs> I know! This is why he's not a time scheduler. And this is why he shouldn't hold the thermos. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the thermos, you idiot! <laughs> Oops. Did I do that? I mean, Tucker is basically like Urkel from Family Matters. I could see that. Yeah, you're right. It's less obnoxious and more funny. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Urkel sounds like Cartman. 
apartment. That's kind of a random connection, but okay. I know who so, you're talking about. I do know who you're talking about too, but still. I never watched South Park. I've only seen episodes. <laughs> Mike, you're the expert probably of the three of us. I've. <laughs> eh. Sort of. I can. I. I. I can sort of hear what you're thinking. Oh yeah, I think. I'm just... Uh, there, isn't there really much to talk about? I mean, there's other point where Sam, you know, Sam is being this righteous hippie, you know, trying to take care of that Samson gorilla. Well, yeah, but that's kind of... Sort of where the whole animal rights thing, I guess, comes in. That's part of her character, though. She's always been an activist. When you yeah. think about it. She's always been very courageous. She likes to be the bolder one of them. And I absolutely love Sam's voice acting. It, it it's very it's, it's it's very sarcastic. It has a very sarcastic delivery, and I love that sarcastic delivery. Oh yes, she's Gray, a very Gray's sarcastic. Delisle, character. Is, is it Gray or Gray's Delisle? Gray Delisle. Yep, Gray Delisle. Delisle. Wait a minute, Azula from Last Airbender? Yep, that's that's the same actress. Same voice actress. <laughs> you can look her name up on IMDb. She's the voice of Azula from Last Airbender. Probably a good thing, too, because I guess that would be a spoiler. Yeah, I'll, I'll remember later. Spoiler alert! Spoilers! 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 Spoilers!
kid's like, excuse me, are you done with the computer? And then he, it's like, how could you sneak up me on like that? You cannot sneak up, up on the skulker. And just shoots him to the wall. And the, and, and the two bullies come out, Dash and his friend. And he's like, did you? Oh, that's what it was. Okay, thanks. And he's like, did you do that? Nah, I just appreciate how the bullies work. <laughs> Yeah. But, um, you know, normally, I can only think of a, um, a very few good bully characters, and the one that instantly comes to mind and is Binky from Arthur. I know who you're talking about. He's like a bu- big bulldog. Yeah. yeah but I think that's what he's supposed to be. Exactly. Yep. A bulldog but, with a really weird nose. But he almost has like a Squidward nose. <laughs> yeah, but, um, but a character like Binky, unlike um, Dash, has depth to him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Much more well developed. We're only in episode two, technically, even though this is episode three. Uh, we'll see Dash kind, kind of evolve over time. Maybe he'll be the yeah. same. Maybe he'll be different. There's a lot of character... There's a lot of care developed going on in the series, and we're only in episode two. And l- later on, there's there's a episode with Dash and Danny where they're both the main focus, but but uh, that's that's like in season uh, two or three, somewhere around there. I'm not gonna talk about it a whole lot right now. No, but was it? We will we'll find out. <laughs> I know which one it is. Next time, next time we'll talk about the real episode three, also known as episode two, according to the air date, uh, also known as parental bonding. Parental bonding. One of my favorites, actually. Same so here. Amazing, so. Very important episode too, because it actually starts a major story arc. Yes, it does. Yes. And saying we're gonna start. Um, I think that I. Okay. Um, when I watch this, um, I watch it in order. Um, I watched episode one, episode two, and the one we're talking about um, was marked as episode three. Right? Yeah, I think, yeah. So did you already watch Parental Bonding? I think I did. Okay, well, we'll, we won't say anything further until the next one. Right. Right. Yeah, I watched it in order from airing two, so I can't really blame you for that. Yeah. That's how how everyone got their start. Everybody does that, but... But we're doing something a little bit. Vi- first introduced on television as well. Exactly. So, exactly. Or, what? What? You know, when we were kids, what choice did we have? We we weren't the ones who were influencing, uh, the, you know, that st- studio executives at Nickelodeon, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Nickelodeon executives. You know, I'm going to release these episodes mostly in order. And then in season three, they'll fuck it all up. I mean, heck, for all we know, they probably, I mean, maybe, maybe not, but maybe at Nickelodeon, they probably have stuff hidden in a canister that wasn't even released yet, certain episodes of different shows. Uh, this depends on how popular the show was. Yeah. Yes, it is. You know how it is sometimes. Um, to close this podcast, um, I think... Hearing about how Nickelodeon is kind of going through a downward spiral right like, now, yeah. yeah. Well, they've been in a downward spiral. I don't even watch Nickelodeon anymore. Well, one, I'm an adult now, and just two, I don't think they even show many cartoons anymore. Really. I don't think so either. I, I, I don't know what's going on over there anymore. I stopped watching after 2007. Same. I would say pretty much same. The 2000s were definitely the golden age of Nickelodeon. Actually, I would have to disagree. I would say the 90s. You know, with Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, their Doug, start. Their st- that was, that was probably Myers. the start. Well, Rugrats carried out through the 2000s as well. Rugrats yeah. Rugrats carried out from 1995 to 2000. It was 10 right. years, yeah. 10 years. Remember, they had the decade, decade in diapers. Decade in diapers. I remember yeah. that. And, um, Here's one thing I've noticed that is really interesting about the 1990s, and animation during that time, like Nickelodeon, Disney, Universal, and animation was 
had an all-time high during that time. But, dur but during the summer, during the summer films, the, the majority of them were really bad. Hmm, I, I guess, well, I wouldn't know that well because I was too young. To Same here. Summer. I was too Same young. Most of, us. most of us were too young to... During, um, to one of Doug Walker's vlogs, the Dark Age of Film. Oh, that I Oh, uh, okay, I see what you mean. I know where you're coming from. Like, I just exactly. And during the 90s, animation, especially for Disney and Pixar, were great. Mm-hmm. Well, Disney was kind of going in their downward spiral, but, um, but Pixar was really the main Pixar was the main okay. Well, Pixar started off with Toy Story, which was 95, then you had yeah. a Bugs Life in 98, then Toy Story 2 in 99, and then, two, and then in the 2000s, Pixar really rocked. That was really the really golden age up. of Pixar. Exactly. Exactly. And um, also during that time, uh, DreamWorks Animation was just starting. And their first film was... Ants. Uh, Ants. The, Ants. And then, of course, the <laughs> same year, Prince of Egypt, which is just awesome. Prince of Egypt is excellent. Excellent. Probably yeah. the best. Probably the best, in my opinion, the best version of the Exodus. Yeah. Oh, Prince of Egypt is like on par with Disney Renaissance. I can't agree with that because it's such a good I remember, um, yeah, Nickelodeon 2. Yeah, definitely Nickelodeon was in their high with what what was the new shows? Ren and Stimpy, um, Rock of My Life, Rugrats. Dogs and there was one other set. I swear to God. My dear Tuskegee is going to come on, dude. 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 Come on, Oh, that's how you so rap. Guys, um, that's, that's so full, so full. Any, any, closing, any closing statements? Any um, closing thoughts on this episode and what's to come? Especially for the next episode. Well, this I would say is probably the most... Uh, not saying the first episode was an action packed It was, but it did... It's, that was more of uh, a pilot doing its job, uh, introduction and everything. This one, I think... Um, this one, I think, was probably the very first quote-unquote action-packed episode, probably, in some respects. Yeah. Especially, yeah. like, with the very end down in the basement with Skulker. Yeah. Oh, portal. And also, oh, yeah, yeah, how can I forget, to uh, Samson Saves the Day at the End. But do you know who Sam is Samson a boy or a girl? And that's the thing. That is the mystery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the mystery. If you've seen the episode, you know the uh, big mystery behind that. Comment below. Is Samson a boy or a girl? I know the answer, but I'm not going to say it. No, no spoilers. No spoilers! <laughs> but, yeah, that, I, I do like All this episode. for extra credit, right? Extra oh, credit. credit. <laughs> extra credit. Almost get, almost get pummeled by a 200-pound gorilla and a rogue cyborg. Uh, Bounty Hunter Ghost. <laughs> Just for extra credit. Skulker the Bounty Hunter. Skulker the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> this will be the last. The box. I'm the box code! You can't hold me in a singular I tell you about saying that? <laughs> <laughs> this, this has oh, been... Yes. Just forgot to Wait. when you first get to the zoo and Skulker's just snooping around the different cages, he ends up in the tiger cage. The cage. The tiger just looks at him and goes, and Skulker's like, oh. Yeah, he's like, it's like little... I've seen much worse. Well, he captures ghosts all the time. Yeah, that's true. You don't mess with me, and there's like a huge, like, you don't even see it, but you hear the tiger attacking him, and there's like a big fight in the background. Don't think that I can take your pelt and know it to my wall. <laughs> that was oh god, that was for like Danny Phantom. I can't even imagine a skinned Danny Phantom. Oh. It was oh. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, 
<laughs> it w- that's, that's a disturbing thought. That it's is. Really I mean, think about it. I mean, it's a reversal. Like, he's a hunter. He hunts these ghosts, and it's like a... You think of it as a human hunter who hunts animals, so I was like thinking, like, he's gonna skin and pelt it. It's like, oh god, no! Well, how do you skin a ghost? They're just air. Danny, on the other hand, though, he's half ghost. Exactly. Ooh, there's a thought. They're very lively when when they're betrayed in uh, fiction. Yeah, most that's of them. True. Are they truly dead? And does that mean? What does that mean for them? Like, do, is the ghost so? Is the ghost so like the halfway point between like heaven and hell or something? Maybe it, it they could haven't be. crossed over Maybe. to the other side. They have regrets, and they and that's why they choose to stay around, just well, floating say, around in limbo on Earth. I would say it's more of unfinished business. That basically. Mm-hmm. It is an interesting thought. See now, now, see now, getting more into more than just the show. We're thinking about ghosts in general, which is another topic. Interesting ghosts. enough, ghosts. That's the one fun part of the show. Um, I don't think we mentioned the last episode, but there's two little things, like little side references. Like if you notice, like the show's based in Amity Park. Yep, Casper High, yep. And, and Amity Park. I'm not sure that this is, this is something that a lot of kids would pick up. No, but later... And one of the most Har- famous haunted houses yep. in America. The Amityville Horror and the DeFeo Murders. Mm-hmm. So when you can't... Um, I picked up on the Amity reference. That's... Yeah, Casper High was the one that they show. That was the one I noticed. Like, oh, Casper High, that's kind of friendly ghost. See, as an adult, you kind of notice these things. And later on, you rewatch the show. Like as a kid, you won't notice those references over your. Right. What I call this, I call this um, the Shrek principle, which means um, you gotta hide adult references. Oh yes. Yeah. Subtly. Well, I remember when the first Shrek came out, back, way too. back in 2001, mm-hmm. my, my sister was pretty small, and my dad took, took us to see it, and we all, I remember my dad was laughing at Eddie Murphy the whole time, but I remember <laughs> uh, uh, my dad, you know, after, after the fact, he was just going on and on, telling people how funny this movie was, He's he was just I going on that. saying, saying like, Basically, when you watch that movie, uh, Eddie Murphy is just basically doing a toned-down version of uh, Delirious with his on-stage stuff from the 80s, Del- mm. Delirious. Mm-hmm. He's gone. I'm making waffles. <laughs> yeah. I'm making waffles. <laughs> chicken and waffles. What Roscoe's chicken and waffles. Chicken. Even though these are two different voice actors and two different uh, characters, wouldn't you say Tucker almost reminds his personality is almost very reminiscent to Donkey a little bit? Yeah. With the wisecracks and everything. Yeah. You could, you could, you could, you could stereotype that as like the typical black character. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. But Tucker is not that obnoxious. No. He doesn't. He doesn't constantly do things that he that that he knows will tick somebody. Well, Shrek on the other hand, he has a pretty. Uh, he has a pretty quick temper. I was going to say, Shrek has a quick temper. Why don't you go out of way, donkey? Who's talking about getting away from you, Shrek? I'm making waffles. <laughs> oh, if you want a, a trick, um, like the all-time worst black stereotype comes from me. Jar, jar. <laughs> I had a that was going to come on. You know, want to know the weird thing? Jar Jar never bothered me for some reason. I mean, I'm a fan of all six Star Wars movies. Mm-hmm. Um, even when I saw the films again, I don't find them that obnoxious, but yeah, I can Some of it is blown a little bit way out of proportion, I think. It's, and yeah. I, I, I mean, I, mean I can kind of see where some people are coming from. You can make you can make certain arguments like, was he really necessary to go along with them? Can he just stay on that boo and wait for them to come back and different things like that? But well, it's something that never really bothered me. So. What makes a, a character like Tucker work? Tucker contributes to the story. He is proactive wow. with helping the characters. 
And he's a techno geek too. He he uses technology in order to help Danny out with his situations because mm-hmm. Sam, yeah. Sam, Sam doesn't really know a whole lot about technology. Danny really doesn't know a whole lot about technology either. Tucker's nope. the tech guy. Yep. Sam, Sam is basically there as the emotional support. I think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Planner character. Tucker's more of the he'll go into action and he'll use the technology to figure out. Right. Danny Just is, let's hope he doesn't get sidetracked in the process. <laughs> or he'll drop the thermos. Right. Hashtag drop the thermos. This episode taught me. Do not drop the thermos. Don't never drop the thermos. That thermos is like a and never open the thermos without without um it's like Pandora's box. I was just gonna say, never open it without <laughs> knowing what's what you're doing. If you're not a professional, don't touch, don't touch it. It's like, it's the, the it's like the Pandora's box. It's basically mm-hmm. like an Ouija board. It's like a magic lamp. A magic lamp. A magic, yeah, a magic lamp. That's a good one. Actually. Well, little spirits come out of the, out of the out of the uh, Fenton furnace, just like a genie comes out of the lamps. Uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> More to come. More to come. Oh. Yep. There's yep. So much you're out. Be there, so there's much more to come. Talk about, but I know. I gotta hold in. I Get, can. You gotta I keep can. it, <laughs> chicken. <laughs> all right. Is that is that all we need to talk about? Are we good? Uh, Nothing no, else. We pretty much covered every all the important aspects of this episode. Oh, yeah, good. I'm good. I'm really looking forward to the next one too because a lot of important, a major important character is going to be introduced, and I think Devin, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm, and I will have a notebook to rip apart. <laughs> you're going to go on a rant. I understand. I don't know. How to I know who you're talking about. I, I He's a very essential character to the whole thing, especially between the relationship between Danny and Sam. But until then, uh, until then stay back. tuned for scenes from the next Danny thing. <laughs> it's like next, soap, it's like a soap opera. Almost. Yeah, next time on Danny Venom. <laughs> yeah, supernatural. Yeah, I think it is actually a, it's a high school soap opera. I think yeah. we're just superheroes. This has been He's a Phantom Podcast, and we are going ghost.